All right. This morning, we don't have a bunch of fancy stuff up here on the slides because uh, this morning, well, it was last night, actually. Last night, uh, I was riding along and the Lord just kind of said, well, you're not going to preach on what you were going to preach on. And in fact, you're not going to do a lot of major preaching. You know, there's a lot of things that are going on in our church right now. Um, not in any negative pride, but I am extremely proud of North Fork Baptist Church. In fact, yesterday we went to the Potomac Highlands Baptist Association yearly meeting. Uh, Amber and I were able to go. And uh, I was actually just enjoying listening to... Some of the pastors, there's a time that they get up and they talk about the things that are going on in their church and what's been happening, this, that, and the other. And, and I was enjoying listening to that. And it kind of got around and I was just sitting there, just listening to everybody and smiling or whatever else. And all of a sudden, I got, a, I got an elbow in the back. And uh, I won't tell you who it was. But, um, but she says, well, tell them what's going on at North Fort. And I said, oh, okay. So I told them what was going on at North Fort. Just, just what's been going on, just the things that are going on, our baptism, our children, our youth, some of the things that have been going on, what we've studied, and it's nice, just, just different things that are going on, uh, the, the community cantata, we're trying to get together, just different things. And when I got through, when I got through, several of the pastors and other folks that were there came up to me and said, Oh, it's just wonderful to hear what's going on at your church. And I did not exaggerate. I did not. I just simply told them what, what's been going on. Y'all, the Lord is blessing at North Fork Baptist Church. The Lord is using you to bless our community. You know, there are times we mention that we're honest. Uh, you know, there are some folks in the community that don't think a lot of us. Maybe because of things that they heard in the past or things that happened in the past. But my friends understand those things are in the past. They're gone. They're done. And what we have right now is the church. I don't know if you have realized, but the unity of North Fork Baptist Church is at a high. The ministry. I mentioned the business meetings that we've had the last two business meetings. And it's funny because it seems like everybody, everybody was coming up asking for money. <laughs> you know, and I was saying, oh my goodness, we're, we're nickel and dime and everything right and left. But the reality and the reason is, is because there's things going on. There's things happening. There's people being ministered to and touched. And, 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 and God is blessing. I spoke, there was two people that I talked to this week. And I didn't bring up the subject. They brought it up to me. But they brought up the idea that they had heard about North Fork in the past. But they've been hearing what's going on. And their opinions have changed on what this church is. We are the church, aren't we? We are the church. Now, I've got a couple of passages. And I don't even have an extreme sermon form this morning. Because I just, I just want to talk to you this morning. All right. I just want to talk to you and I want to help you understand some things. Let me start off in 1 Timothy 3, uh, verses 14 and 15. It says this. These things I write to you. Now this is Paul writing to Timothy. Remember we've talked about this recently. That Timothy was the, was the first pastor that actually grew up in the church. His mother and his grandmother raised him knowing Christ from the time he was young. Now he's the first generation of churched kids growing up and becoming now a pastor and Paul takes him under his wing and he begins to teach him and he says Timothy these things I write to you though I hope to come to you shortly but if I am delayed I write to you so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth Let's just look at a couple of quick points. First of all, it is important for Paul that Timothy, a young man, a young preacher boy, I don't know exactly at this time how old he was, still in 20s. And the reason it's so important is because you remember the society at this time, if you weren't 30 or 33 years old, somewhere in there you weren't 30 years old, you really didn't have anything to say. Nobody really wanted to listen to you. It was sort of the societal way of doing things. There was no... no 
college students running around and ranting and raving and picketing or whatever. No, if you wanted to speak, you better just simply wait until you're at least 30 years old or you've got nothing to say. That was the way things were. Timothy was probably still a young man here. If he was 30, he was just over. But Timothy was put in charge of leading the church. So he says to him, I, I, there's, there's things that you ought to know on how to conduct yourself in the house of God. Did you know that, that there, are, there are ways that you should conduct yourself in the house of God? And I'm not just talking about don't hoot and holler and jump up and down in the back. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about is how you should do the ministry of the church. Who you should be, how you should act. Now... We're going to look in just a minute at it. Well, I'm going to wait and hold off on that in 1 Corinthians. And I'll tell you what that's about in just a second. But the point is, is he's saying there are certain ways you need to be organized. You need to do things correctly in the church, especially as a leader of the church. And he goes on to say, in which the church is, is, is the church of the living God. You know, this is not your church. This is not my church. I changed something because it was important to me. It was important to me on the... Um, on the will serve sheet. And make sure you pick up one of those in the back. But there, but there was here. Um, let's see here. It was on one of the. Do, 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 do. Let me find the right one. Okay. Right here. Miss Ashley. Last year it said this. And I, I didn't pick up on it last year. It said um, work under the pastor. To oversee Sunday school organization and function. And blah 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 blah. I changed that. I changed it to works with the pastor. Why? This is not my church, y'all. I mean, it's my church, but you understand it's not, I don't own it. It's not my church. It's not your church. You do not run it. I do not run it. The deacons do not run it. The finance committee does not run it. The trustees do not run it. The church council does not run it. Even Miss Linda don't run the kitchen necessarily. Oh, I'm sorry. Just kidding. She got me on that one. Just kidding. But we don't, we don't, none of us run. And in fact, right now I had a conversation with someone about this a while back because they still had the idea that, that this one or that one was running the church. And I'll be honest with you, if any of you have sat in business meetings recently, you recognize and you understand that there's nobody in this church running anything. I do my job. The deacons do their job. The finance committee does their job. Even Miss Linda does her job most of the time. No, I'm just kidding, Miss Linda. I'm sorry. But we do our jobs. We don't, we, 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 no one is running it. And in fact, it, is, it has been said in all of these meetings, it has been said, church, listen, we have a job. Finance committee, here is our job. Deacons, here is our job. Pastor, here is your job. All the different positions and committees and places in the church, here is your job. And each of us do our job. And we're like, we're like a, you know, we're like a football team. The tackle does not tell the sinner what he is to do. The tight end does not tell the receiver what he is to do. They know their job. The quarterback says, run this play. And guess what? They know what that play is and they do their job. And then together, if it runs right, if every one of them do it just right, what happens? Touchdown, right? If it's done just right, this is how the church of God works. I am not in charge. I want you to understand that. I found out when I, I sat down and I was asking when I first got here, the, um, you know, different churches are, 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 are governed different ways, and that's okay. Um, but I asked, I said, I said, now, I'm just seeing, is, is, is this a, a deacon-led church? Is, is, because there's nothing wrong with a deacon-led church, a church council-led church, a pastor-led church. These are, these are different things we study in seminary. And there's nothing wrong with any form of sort of governmental structure or anything. But I asked that. And, and all the deacons, you know what they said? They said, no, 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 no. No, this is a pastor-led church. And you know what I said to them? This is me telling you from my heart. You know what I said to them? I said, Brother Rob, I'll tell you, you can ask him. I said, I said okay. I said, I said, I don't mind leading. I don't mind leading, okay? But here's what I'll do. If I see something it needs, if there's a need, if I see something that needs to be done or I believe something needs to be done, I'll come to y'all and we'll sit down and we'll talk about it. And together we'll determine what's right to do. Then we'll take that to the church on a business meeting night and we'll present it to them. And we'll say, church, here's our heart. Here's what, here's what we'd like to do. What is the will of the church? 
That is the way a church runs. Now, let me go back because there's one thing in your mind that is important and you are correct. This is not my church. This is not your church. I don't run the church. The deacons don't run the church. You don't run the church. Nobody here runs the church. Well, somebody here does actually. Who leads this church? Christ. Through the Holy Spirit of God, he touches Miss Linda and says, Miss Linda, you know what needs to be done during fellowships and kitchen times. He goes back there and he says, Rob, you're the chairman of the deacons. He says, Rob, here's what the deacons need to be doing. He goes to the finance committee. He goes to the, the, the decoration committee and the flower committee and the benevolence committee. He goes to each one. He doesn't come to me and say, Mike, go tell the benevolence committee to do this. He doesn't do that. This is what a lot of people don't understand. They think that the pastor is to tell him. No, the pastor is to be a resource to all people. I've done all kinds of things. I've, I've done everything from nursery to teaching adults to youth and children, uh, senior adults. I've done pretty much almost every ministry there is in the church. I've done it. And, 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 I have, and I have an ability. God has blessed me with the gift of administration so I can be a resource to you. I can help you. I, I want to be there to help you. But that's what I am. I'm a resource to you. I'm not your boss. I'm not your boss. And I want the church to know that. And I want the world to know that. North Fork Baptist Church is run by Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, plain and simple. And he will speak to Miss Linda about the kitchen. He'll speak to Rob about the deacons. He'll speak to, the, to, to, to Miss Lucy about the finance committee. He'll speak to Miss Ashley about Sunday school. Now, do each of them have enough respect for me and my experience that if I come and I say, Miss Linda... Um, can I talk to you about this? Does she have enough respect for, to stop and say, yeah, pastor, let me see what you have to say. Yes. And when I come to business meetings, I've stood before the business meetings and I've said, listen, listen, if, 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 if we're boating on a new carpet for the sanctuary and I want red and y'all want blue and, and I say, I want it red and y'all vote it blue, guess what it's going to be? Blue. And guess what? I'm going to be perfectly happy. It's okay. I don't have to be right. Now, on spiritual things... I pray that you respect and honor the position that I'm called to enough on spiritual matters to at the very least stop and pray about what I have to say on those things. That's what I pray. I hope that I, that I don't want to lead because I have a position and a title. I want to lead because you see that I am a resource. I love you. And my desire, just like yours, is to accomplish the work of Christ. So I want to be a resource, but I am not the boss. He is the boss and he will lead each of you in the position that you are given. Um, I didn't put it in here because I'm going to preach it later. I'm going to preach the sermon that he preached yesterday because that was a good sermon. But let me throw you out this little thing right here. Here's what happened. Moses, okay, um, Moses was out there tending sheep. And all of a sudden he heard, he saw this strange thing and thunders and lightnings. He goes up on the side of the mountain there and there's a burning bush. And who is this burning bush? It's, it's God, right? Come to speak to him. And he says, hey, I've heard the cry of my people. I want you to go get them. I want you to go and, and I'm going to send you and I want you to go get them and bring them out from slavery. And you know what he says, Moses says? Moses says, I, but, but who am I that you're calling me? And you know what Moses would have liked to have heard? You are Moses. Moses. Raised up in the king's household in Egypt. Educated. You're a smart man. You have many talents that I can use. But is that what God said to him? No. He said, who am I that you would send me? And God said this. I am sending you and I will be with you. What is the point? The point is, it doesn't matter who you are. It matters not at all who you are, what talents you have, what you think about things. It doesn't matter. If you allow God to lead you, he will lead you. He will direct you. And he will do great and mighty things through you. Boy, that was a lot just in that first part of Timothy. Wasn't it? Anyways. But you know how to conduct yourself because the church is, the, is, is, is the, the, the church of the living God. It is the pillar and ground of the truth. What does that mean? That, that word uh, pillar and ground or ground there, it's, it's foundation or mainstay. 
you, this right here is where we see that the church is the foundation of what is right and moral in this world. You say, well, that's the Bible. That's right, that's right, that's right. But what we're talking about is the church, is the, is the, is the group, is the body that takes the truth of the scripture and implants it in the world, stands for it in the world, teaches it to the world. I've mentioned it before. I believe in a, in a rapture. And I believe before the tribulation time that we're going to be taken up, those of us that know Jesus Christ. So you say, but how can all this horrible, immoral, terrible stuff happen during the time of tribulation? How can it happen? Because the church is not here to stand against it. If we don't stand, who will? He says, and there's an organized way. There's a way to accomplish this work. North Fork Baptist Church, there is a way to accomplish this work in Pendleton County and beyond. Let's jump to our next slide there, Ethan. I'm going to hurry because we got baptism. I jumped over to 1 Corinthians 14, and I'm going to read two verses, but I'll tell you what's in between. I'm going to read verses 33, and I'm going to read 40. Listen to this. For God is not the author of confusion, that word means disorder, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints. Down to verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. All right, what's the circumstance he's writing this about? Okay, I have not preached on tongues yet. I'll, I'll preach, I'm going to preach on tongues sometime. I'll do that. And if you want to ask me, I'll talk to you and tell you about tongues, okay? What that, what that is and what I believe about that, okay? But, so we're not, gonna, we're not addressing that necessarily today. But what's going on here when he's talking about this order, that it's not about confusion and, it's not about, and it must be in order, is that at this particular time, the people in this church, they were speaking in tongues. And in fact, what they were doing is they were going wild. I don't know how many of you have ever turned on the television and turned to some of these channels with some of the Pentecostal movement and stuff. Have you ever seen the pastor get up and he says something and then he goes into convulsions and the rest of the church goes to speaking in tongues and jumping up and down and hooting and hollering and running and jumping and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not against that because to me, if that's who you are, if you go to ball games and you go to other things and you celebrate by jumping up and down and hooting and hollering and running around... Okay, that's great. If from who you are, you're worshiping God, that is wonderful. But let me tell you something. The Bible does not teach that God will, will come down, take control of your body, and cause you to do stuff. That does not, it is not that way. But if from who you are, you see the truth, you begin to worship God, and you can't help but to express it in the way that, that, that He has made you, there's nothing wrong with that. But my friends, when it is time to open up the Word of God, when it is time to come together in corporate prayer and in worship and other things. He says here, the problem was, was they were speaking over each other. Nobody was giving any kind of word of encouragement because this one was talking and that one was talking, that one was talking, that one was talking. And he says, no, 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 no. The church is not about disorder. Everybody talking. And he goes on to say, listen, if somebody wants to prophesy, that means to preach, then let them do it one at a time. Okay? One at a time. Don't, don't preach over somebody. Come and get, do it one at a time. He's talking about order within the church. Now you wonder why I took extra time this morning when over all these announcements and all this kind of stuff. Because we have to have order. We need to do things in the right way. You know, I talk about the budget. Budget committee, I mentioned your names. Please see me. I've got a, a suggested outline for us so that we can get the budget taken care of, present it to the church, and begin it in 2024. Why do we need a budget? Because several of you have come to me and said, Pastor Mike, I, you know, I'm over this ministry, and, and I need to do this. How do I get money? What, what, what do I need to do to get, get the money to be able to accomplish this? Uh, you, know, uh, do, you know, do I have a budget? Do I have something? Or do I just need to go? The, and right now they have to go to the, to the church business meeting every single time and ask for the money. And, and so we need to organize because if children's church needs something, we, they realize, oh, something happened this week. I, we got to have this by next week. We can't have a business meeting and ask about it, but they've got a budget. You see, and you're saying, Brother Mike, this is not preaching. This is not. Bu yes, it is, because God desires order. God desires right. We want to enable everybody in here as they choose, as they go back there to the wheel serve sheets and they check off and they say, I'm going to commit to teach. I'm going to commit to help. I'm going to commit to be a part of this planning or to do a part of this committee. I'm going to commit to this. The least we can do as a church is say, OK, well, we're going to organize. You'll know how much money you have. So that you can accomplish the work over the year. 
You'll know, you'll know volunteers that can come and help you. You'll know everything you need to know. And we'll be a resource to you to accomplish this. That is order. And when that happens, when that happens, the church moves. It moves smoothly. And it will surprise you what God will do. So he's specifically talking about the disorder within a service here, but he's talking in general about this idea, let all things be done in order. Now, you can click that last slide there. This morning back there on the table, I don't mind that table there is where you put them in the morning. On the table at the very back right there against the wall, under the, under the AC things, we have our will serve sheets. And uh, last year... Uh, I took somebody's advice. Uh, I won't say who, but it was uh, Kathy Versick. But, um, no, I'm just kidding. And I made 45, and we needed more. I had to make some more. Today, I want to encourage you in something. You may think to yourself, I'm not a teacher. That's okay. You may think, I don't do good with kids. That's okay. There is a lot, a lot to be done in this church. And sadly, church... We're better, most churches, less than 10% of the people do the work of the church. I believe that is actually greater here. I believe we're at 15% or more, to be honest with you. We have a wonderful giving church here, working church. But it's still a small group of people. And there's a lot of work to be done. So much to be done to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to disciple those that are here, to reach out to those who, who God has laid on their heart and to bring them in. There's much to be done. So I want to encourage you this morning. Please, take one of those will serve sheets. I printed 70 of those things. Okay? Got 70. There's 70 back there. Now these are generalizations. You don't, if, if you get on there and you say, I, don't, I can't be a Sunday school teacher. Guess what? But there is a part on there that says, Sunday school teacher, helper. There's a helper. Um, you say, well, I kind of like teenagers, but I, I can't really teach them or, or I'm not really sure what to do. There's a thing back there that says, Children's Committee and Youth Committee, Planning Committee. And what that does is you just come together with us and, and the teachers and others and we help plan the year, the things that need to be accomplished, how we need to disciple. We get with, we get with Miss Ashley and say, Miss Ashley, what they're doing in Sunday school? Oh, that's great. Or can we, can we do this or that? And we get with the Wednesday night. It, it gives input. It helps us to organize and we say, hey, we need to have an activity. We need to do some things. We need to be active in these groups and you can help be a part of that. There's much to do and if there's something, if, if everything on there just looks like there's too much, you come to me. There are things that that I can, I can assign you to do that would be wonderful. It would be wonderful to have someone that, that makes sure because you know we all kind of take part after fellowships and all get in the trash and doing whatever. But hey, if you want to be the trash guy, whoo, come on. Wouldn't that be wonderful, Miss Linda? Because Miss Linda has to say, Pastor, and points out, okay. And if I'm doing something, Ethan, you know, or whoever, you know, we're, we're trying to get the trash done. I mean, I'm serious about that. You don't understand the little things that go on in the church, the things that need to be done. And it makes such a difference in the ministry and the things that happen here at the church. So I want to encourage you. If I felt it was right, I'd get down on my knees and I'd beg you. <laughs> Take one of those will serve sheets. Don't just go to marking. Take it. Take it in your hand. Find somewhere to be for a few minutes and say, God, I'm going to look over this. Holy Spirit, show me what you'd have me do. It's that important, church. It is that important. So don't forget those will serve sheets. On that table as you go, whether you're going out, hopefully you're going to the fellowship hall, everybody going to see the baptisms. But grab one as you go. This morning, I'm not going to have any kind of invitation or anything. What I want to do is I just want to encourage you and I want to pray for you. That God will touch your heart. That God will show you what he would have you to do. How he would have you to serve and be a part of the church. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace. And I thank you for North Fork Baptist Church. Dear God, I thank you for what is going on. 
Dear God, I've talked with others that see it. And many here within our church that are active, they, they, they see what's going on. But God, the most important thing is, God, I know that you see what's going on. Lord, you see a people who desire you and love you. And that love that they have uh, that comes from you, Lord, overflows and they begin to love other people. And from that comes ministry, comes service. Lord God, I ask that you touch every heart here. And Lord, those that are missing, that are part of our church, that are, that are in various places today. Lord, I ask that you touch their hearts. That you speak to them plainly what you would have them do to serve, to be a part. Lord God, we are not a, we are not a civic organization. We are not a community club. Lord, we're nothing like that. We are the church of the living God. Each of us taking our place as part of the body, as Paul said, dear God. So that the body can move as a whole. So that we can run and jump and accomplish, dear God, what you have given us to do. Lord God, I thank you for those that have served. I thank you for those, Lord, that will step up and serve. Lord, to you be all the honor and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.